All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Management 2000. I pulled the sign up sheet around. Has everybody gotten it? Eight. I'll leave it up here in case anybody else comes in. Um, if you have your resumes and cover letters, pass those to the front. Uh, yeah, you can email it. That's fine. And I will take a look at these and write feedback on them and get them back to you um, like the next time that we meet. Um, if you didn't hand it up now, make sure to leave it. Either email it to me or leave it up here um, at the end. So. interviewing so we've moved past um, resumes the thing that will get you in the door um, get you the interview and get you to this stage we talked about the resume can um, keep you from getting a job but it's not going to get you a job in and of itself the interview portion is often the meat and potatoes it's the um, part where people focus the most on and it really um, is one of the biggest determinants of whether or not you get hired. So I want to start off by just generally asking what scares you about the interview process? What things are you nervous about? What questions do you want to get answered as we go through, through this time? What comes to mind? I want to make sure I hit on everything. Yeah. I just get nervous that they're going to ask me like a really just like left field question and I'm not going to know how to answer or something. Okay. Just being unprepared, I guess, or over preparing for them. Okay. Do you want to one? I'll, I'll write all these down and then we'll look through them. Yep. Um, I guess just you know, I do feel prepared for going out there and just like blanking. Okay. There's a 
lot of common questions that people have, how to answer this question, how to answer that question, um, that I will, um, <clears throat> that I'll kind of address as we, as we go through here. Um, so if there are other things that you think of, um, kind of jot them down to yourself, you know, and ask at the end, I'll leave some time, some time for us to talk through those things together. So. One of the things that people are always thinking about and wondering about when they are preparing for an interview is what questions are they going to ask? Really, they're only asking you one question in an interview, one overarching question. That is, why should I hire you? Now, you can take that question and break that down into a couple of smaller questions. The first one is, can you do the job? Um, are you capable of doing it? Are you um, qualified to do it? Can they trust you to do it? That kind of thing. The second question is, do I like you? Um, are you somebody that I want to spend 40 hours or more a week with? Are you going to fit in with this organization, who you are, who we are? Um, are you going to be happy here? Hiring is a high, um, high stakes process. There's a lot to lose in that. And so the more comfortable they can feel in somebody they hire, um, the more that they can feel like you are low risk and that you're going to stick around the organization, the more comfortable they're going to be in. A lot of that comes down to do I like you and are you a good fit here? I served on a hiring team um, for several years and one of the things we were always trying to determine is how much does this person want to work here? You know, is this a backup plan for them? Is this their first priority? Um, because that would be a determinant for us regarding how long they may stick around um, and how hard they work and all kinds of things like that. And then the third one, are you motivated? You may be qualified to do the job, you may understand the job, we may like having you around, but if you're not motivated, the first two um, answers are pretty irrelevant because we're not going to get the productivity out of you. I had somebody that I supervised once that was very good at graphic design and one of the reasons that we hired him was because we wanted him to make flyers and publicity and posters and things like that um, and the way it was a project management you know type of position and he would make those signs and posters for the projects that he was on but we couldn't get him to contribute to the um, you know larger team and do this for any of the other special projects or things that we were working on. He wasn't motivated to um, go above and beyond in that regard and so it really wasn't as beneficial for us to have somebody like that that wasn't going to contribute and you know utilize what skills they have for um, the good of the team um, you know as much as we had hoped that it would be. So what we'll do is then go into talking about how you answer some of these questions. Um, one of the questions that they may ask you, you know, tell me about yourself. Is turn this up a little bit. Um, one of the questions that they may ask you is, I'm thinking chronologically, think back to uh, tell me about yourself, uh, where they're from, and, and here's some into, uh, tips for ways that you could answer that question. Uh, their decision about coming to Ohio State and why they chose Ohio State. You know where they're from. from the start here. That question of, you know, tell me about yourself is so open-ended it can be intimidating. And so really a student can handle this question by thinking chronologically. Think back to uh, high school, uh, where they're from, and then get into uh, their decision about coming to Ohio State and why they chose Ohio State. I think it's also helpful to give some results. That's a big decision about choosing where you went to college. 
Uh, give us some results. Are you happy at Ohio State and why you're happy at Ohio State? I really want to get a uh, big picture of who this person is. It's usually about the first question after we've had some small chit chat and I want to hear about their background. Usually if they put it in chronological order, it's great. So walk me through you know, where they're from, what they did in high school, uh, that can be a building block to what they do here at Ohio State. I want to hear why they chose to go to Ohio State, why they chose their major, and um, really it helps you know, give me a bigger picture of who they are. It also can bring up some examples of uh, things that where we might find connections. I want something specific to what they've been doing in college, maybe something in high school that they had accomplished or a part of, maybe they were on the golf team in, in high school and now they're doing that in college, and tell me what their interests are and where they're headed with their curriculum and what they want to do when they graduate, some of their career interests. So not a lot of personal information. I don't want to know if they're married, have kids, their living arrangements. I don't want to know any of that. I want it to stay very much focused on accomplishments and things that are going to relate to the job. When I ask a student, um, tell me about your resume, tell me about yourself, that's really the opportunity for them, in my opinion, to frame the interview. So I want them to not just walk through the components of their resume. I can read that, I read that, I understand that. I want them to pick the things that really get links them from their experiences to my company. So the things in their experiences they're particularly proud of, the things in their experiences that demonstrates the leadership, the, innovate, the innovative creativity, the um, technical skills that they know that I'm looking for for a finance and accounting job within J&J. Well, okay, so the biggest I thing to keep in mind questions. when answering that question is you want to, for the most part, share about your background, share why you're interested in this role. Again, why is this job something you're applying for? What's led you to this point? And keep it mostly professional. You can sprinkle in a little bit of your personality you know, briefly touch on interests or what you like to do to address fit, but that's only about 25% of your answer at most. You want to keep it about 75% business, professional, um, and then 25% personal. They want to just see where you're going to go with that question too. Uh, what kinds of things are you going to share? Um, one of the things they're looking at is how you make small talk. And if you're taking your client out to a meal or you know making conversation with them before a meeting starts or something like that what kinds of things are you going to talk about what kinds of things are you you know going to bring up and so those are things to keep in mind as you're thinking about how to answer that question as well well with behavior-based interview questions uh, what employers are doing is they're looking at past behavior to get a predictor of future behavior. Let's say they ask, can you give me an example of a time where you took initiative to solve a problem? They want to hear a story about where you took initiative. And you need to organize that using the STAR technique, where you can talk about situation, task, action, and result. What I see a lot of students tend to do is they'll tell us a great story and forget the results. That's like watching a great movie and not seeing the ending of it. Well, the STAR technique helps organize their thoughts. Behavioral interviewing is telling a story. You're telling us a story, you're setting up the situation so we understand exactly what you're doing. You know, you set the frame, you set the picture for us in our minds. The task is, um, you know, what was the problem, what was the issue? Set that piece up. But I want to know what you did, not my manager did this or we did this. I want to hear a lot of I, what did you specifically do? And the results, how did it end? It's like telling a joke and not giving the punchline if you don't add the results in there. When they get those behavioral questions, take it back to a, a specific example, explain what they did, set it up, give the details, and include a lot of names, dates, times, numbers, and places. The more details you can get, it really helps the employer understand um, the depth and breadth of what you accomplished. Oftentimes the student is giving examples that say, we did this and we did that when they're talking about a committee. I will stop them and say, that's great that your committee did that, but what specifically did you do? And what I find oftentimes is that they didn't do anything. You really want to kind of go through your resume, 
Um, go th even, even go through the last couple of months of emails that you that you've had from student organizations, from your work, from different classes, and really get into the detailed one or two or three detailed stories that you can tell that you can actually know exactly what happened, exactly what the concept was, who was in the meeting, what the real problems were, what the detailed actions were, and not only what you did, but some of the options that you considered, um, that the group considered before making the final decision, and then detailed in terms of what the result was. Well, well David, can you tell me about a time where you Anybody heard of behavioral-based interviewing before or situational-based interviewing before this video? Okay. These are the questions that start off with, tell me about a time when. Give me an example of. Um, the idea behind these are the past performance is the best predictor of future behavior. Employers are looking for more specific examples. They don't want to just get generic responses from you, and so they want to hear about your experiences. A good way to answer these types of questions is to start with sharing the situation. So they'll ask you about a particular situation, or I'm sorry, just a particular question, and you will say, okay, here was the situation. I was working at um, such and such company and um, this was my role, okay? And then the task. I was charged with accomplishing this. And then the action. How did you go about doing it? What action did you take? And then what was the result of that? You can also add a CH for a change, uh, make it starch, and share what change occurred as a result of that. Um, what was improved in the company? What policy was you know, revised? Um, that kind of thing. You could also add what it means for this role. That's even taking it a step further, and that makes your interview even better. So you say, I did this. Now, how does that help me for the job I'm applying for here? Well, and then you go into talking about what you know about the job that you're applying for, that you're interviewing for specifically. This, these may also include questions about when a time, a time when something didn't go well. Um, you want to be prepared to answer those too and share, here's what the situation was, here is what unforeseen um, circumstances or unforeseen challenges I had, and here is what the outcome was. We didn't get this done, I didn't live up to my full potential, you know, whatever, I didn't achieve this goal. Here's what I learned from that. Next time when I'm in this type of situation, I will be sure to, you know, whatever. You're not expected to know everything, but they want to know that, um, you know, you've learned from mistakes, that you've learned from your past experiences, and that you're motivated and aware of how to apply those things and you know be better the next time. So here's an example of a possible uh, behavioral based interview question. Tell me about a time when you faced a challenge or problem in the workplace. How did you handle it? Does anybody have a um, situation that they can think of that they would uh, mind sharing? Just tell us the t a time when you face a challenge or a problem in the workplace. What was the situation? It's like really basic. Like it's almost like embarrassing. Not embarrassing, but mm -hmm. like it would have no like weight in what you're applying. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a hostess, and like okay. one time this 
Sheffield and me for like carrying out a to-go order because okay. it didn't go through the other person, but the customer was really unhappy. And he was like, he waited for a long time, so I like went back and got it myself and gave it to him. And then I just went to a manager because it wasn't my fault. Like the food was supposed to be ready and the lady was busy that was supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, like something like that, like I've never really had like a real problem. But yeah. what would you say? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you, you kind of shared several of the um, several of these just in that. Um, the task was to get the food out to the person, you know, in a timely manner. Um, the action you took was checking, you know, went back to check to see where the food's at, bring it out. Um, you went and mentioned it to the manager. Um, that was good insight for you to make sure that the manager you know, was in the loop so that they were not caught off guard by an angry customer. Yeah. You know, that's something that's going to be impressive to an employer when they, you know, hear that um, story. She didn't just go and take care of it and, and move on. She um, had the insight to prepare the manager so he could handle it the best, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, what was, the, what was the result of that? Did you, were you able to diffuse a potential um, um, unhappy customer or keep the situation from getting worse, keep the server from getting into a yelling match with the guest, whatever those kinds of, you know, things were. Um, does that help you to kind of see yeah, I guess I'm just the like, value in that? It feels irrelevant to us, like there might be some value in it to them. Yeah, well, I think it's important to, I think it's important to take some time before the interview to come up with some specific examples. Um, think about what stories that you might tell in an interview. Um, there's all kinds of potential interview questions like in the workbook that you've got um, and online you can just Google potential interview questions and just read through and see what some of the questions are that they're asking and then ask yourself, what are some stories that I can tell that is going to answer this question for them? And so you'll want to have a little bit of an idea before you go in um, about what stories you're going to tell and what that says about you. What does that say about your personality? What does that say about your work ethic? Uh, what does that say about your knowledge or your experience and that kind of thing? Um, you do want to make sure and bring stories back full circle. The challenge that people sometimes will run into is they'll start telling a story and then they'll say, where am I going with this? Why am I, why am I sharing this? And then they start to ramble. People have a huge tendency to ramble when they get nervous. And so it's important for you to know this is why I'm sharing this, this is the point that I'm gonna make and I want to relate it back to the job at hand. Um, so does that, does that answer? Yeah. Okay, answer that question, good. Um, so that might be one of the things when you're preparing your stories, um, you may wanna think about a challenge or a problem and how you handled it. Another example. Give me an example of a goal that you reached and how you achieved it. I was tasked with this. Um, in order to do this, I went and found people that have accomplished this in the past. I asked them questions. I um, did some research on my own. That shows your resourcefulness. That shows your motivation. To do the job well you didn't just say okay I'm gonna do this the best I know how and however well I can do it um, is good enough you know no you went to the the um, effort and the difficulty of finding people and seeking advice and and it shows your ability to take direction and um, to do a job to the best of your ability so that might be another example or question of a, um, of a situational interview question. Another format you can use other than the STAR technique would be the um, acronym TODAY. If you talk about when you were part of a team, 
this is what the team was faced with. Um, here were the obstacles that were standing in our way. Um, here were the duties that we were asked to accomplish. Um, here's what we did accomplish. And then here is what I was able to contribute to the team. Working in teams is valuable because you learn about your role. And the workplace today is becoming more and more about uh, team-based environments, team-based projects, and employers are going to want to know what role do you play in that. Um, just like on the video, the woman said, I like to specifically ask them, what did you do? Because if you have all the people on a team with the same abilities, same interests, there are going to be gaps in it. And so employers are looking to build teams with as many different um, strengths and skills as possible. So it's important for you to be able to know what yours are and to be able to articulate um, that to them. You'll also see it asks for weaknesses, which is another common question that is asked in interviews. Um, I think I've got a video um, <coughs> to talk about addressing that weakness question in a minute. But I say all this to say you don't necessarily need to know the individual specific questions that they're going to ask. Really, you just need to know the answers. And the answers can come through examples that you prepare, kind of like we talked about. Having um, the preparation and going in with the mindset of, here is what I think it's going to take in order to do this job well. And here are some examples of how I have exhibited those skills and I have stories prepared. Um, another thing, reason this is beneficial is to help with what you asked about um, just blanking on a question. This is going to happen probably to all of us. Um, I've been there several times. Hopefully you have not, but it's likely where you're going to ask an interview question and you just freeze. And you're like, oh crap. And you're saying in your head, what in the world am I going to, to say here? I have no idea. <laughs> um, that's when your stories are a good, um, of good use to you. You know, you can start telling one of those stories and as you're doing that, it's something that's familiar, you know what you're talking about, you know what happened, and then you can at least kind of pick something out of that story and say, here's an example of when I dealt with something like that, you know, and pull an element out from that story or that example. If you have, you know, five to eight um, examples or things like that, hopefully there's going to be one that comes to mind in those moments, um, and that's going to be kind of a, kind of a clutch for you. Um, Here's another secret. If you can't answer the exact question that they're asking, at least think about how you can answer one of the three overarching questions. Can you do the job? Do I like you? Are you motivated? Because that's really what they care about. Uh, you may not be able to answer that exact question, but if you can still answer the broader question, then they're, that's what they're going to remember because they got their question answered not the specifics of the smaller question within a question. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, let me see if I skipped over the, uh, did we watch the weaknesses video? No, on answering the weakness question. Uh, let me see what happened to it here.
Hi, John Haney for The Job Shopper. One of the most dreaded interview questions that virtually every interviewer asks at some point during the interview is what is your greatest weakness? What is it about this question that makes it one of the most uncomfortable questions to handle? I understand that as a job seeker, you want to highlight your positive attributes instead of introducing any personal characteristics that could possibly eliminate you from consideration from the job that you want. The potential pitfalls to this question are real, so you have to be thoughtful and careful with your response. But if you admit that you have trouble getting to work on time and you resent being told what to do by your superiors, your interview is going to be cut pretty short. So what's the best way to handle this question? First, understand that as humans we all have weaknesses. In fact, your career choices have likely been guided as much to avoid your weaknesses as to play your strengths. Your interviewer knows this, and what they want to gauge is how honest you are with your own personal assessment and acknowledging your shortcomings. The key is to answer in this question lie in doing your homework so you understand clearly what your real strengths and weaknesses are so you can prepare an answer that reveals an appropriate and relevant weakness tells the interviewer how you deal with it and how you leverage your strengths to compensate for any professional shortcomings. Whatever you do, stay away from the trite response that your greatest weakness is you work too hard or you're such a perfectionist that you have to make sure that everything you produce is spectacular. Your interviewer knows it's nonsense and what they're looking for is something honest, truthful, something insightful. They want an answer that indicates that you have at least some capacity for introspection and honest personal assessment. Look, if your weakness is a lack of organization or difficulty attending to detail, your response could be something like, I recognize back in school I have trouble staying on top of a lot of details. And after I miss some class assignments, I realize I really need an easy system to stay organized. My systems evolved over the years, and now I use a combination of tools on my PC and on my phone to make sure I write down the tasks I need to perform, track project assignments, and set alarms to remind me throughout the day whenever I need to meet a project deadline, attend a meeting, or make a call. I've also learned to delegate specific tasks to my assistant to ensure that contracts and other important documents are signed and filed the right way, that meeting confirmations are made, and that my calendar is kept up to date. The system is now part of my daily routine, so it's effective, and it lets me focus on business development. <coughs> there. With the right preparation, you can reveal a weakness without appearing weak, and get on to more important things, like salary negotiations. Something about that guy makes me laugh. Uh, but he's got some good insight um, on answering that question. The bottom line is you want to be honest when answering this question. Question. You want to use real life examples. Um, it shows good self-awareness. It shows maturity because if you don't know what you are not good at, you're not going to be able to correct it or improve on it. So you want to show that you're aware of those things um, and you want to come across as genuine and um, and um, real. If you say something like, you know, I work too hard, I'm a perfectionist, something like that, those are just kind of fake, canned, you know, responses, and, and recruiters can can sniff those out. Um, you know, if you if you say something like, I like to please people, I have trouble saying no, I take on um, too much, here is how I have managed that. You know, here's how I've, uh, what action I've taken to help myself from taking on too much and then not being able to deliver um, on everything that I, that I promise. I know what my boundaries are and I, I know, um, you know, just what I can handle. Another example might be, I really get excited about the beginning of a project. The idea of possibilities and vision 
and the future excite me, but I often struggle to finish up on a project after, you know, after I get started on it. So, therefore, here's what I've done, you know, whatever. I have, at the beginning of a project, I've set out a clear timeline, and I put reminders in my cell phone, and I get notifications that this needs to happen, this needs to happen, this needs to happen. I have looked at some of the things that I've had trouble finishing in the past, and I have moved those to the front um, as much as I could, taking care of the big stuff, or I've created some, um, some levels of accountability, so I've involved other people in the project, so they're asking me about how to finish this. See, those are weaknesses that um, are still going to impress an employer because it shows your initiative, and it shows your awareness, and it shows your ability to um, overcome those things. It's a very tricky um, kind of a question to answer. It's not easy. Um, and it's going to take some self-reflection and some time thinking about you and um, you know what what's true about you. If anybody has taken the Strengths Quest, there is an activity on there. And if you'd like a copy of the activity, if you don't have it, send me an email and I'll email it to you. It's called Balconies and Basements. And it talks about when you're at your best and you have this strength, here's what you can do, here's what you can accomplish. Um, when you are not at your best, and you're somebody with this area of strength or this personality, here are some weaknesses or traps that you can tend to fall into. If you're needing some ideas, you know, you can look at what those balconies are and say, oh, okay, I could sometimes fall into this trap, or I could be stereotyped or classified as, what, a procrastinator or, um, you know, weak or afraid of conflict. I can see that in myself. Uh, let me come up with some examples of how I've how I've overcome that. Then there's going to be a portion of the interview that gives you an opportunity to ask questions of the employer. And people are always like, well, what questions do I ask? You should have some questions prepared for the employer. You should have more questions prepared then you're actually going to need to ask. And the reason for this is because some of those questions may get answered throughout the course of the interview. Sometimes employers will say, let me start off by telling you a little bit about us. And they will tell you some things about them, and that may answer some of the questions that, uh, that you have. Yeah? Is it appropriate to bring a notebook or notepad in to interview and like, sort of take notes of what they're saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't want to have your head down in it where you're, uh, you know, constantly looking at the paper and you're not looking around, you're not making eye contact, um, but it shows preparedness to come in with a notebook and with some questions out and with a pen and um, sometimes I will even jot down the names of the people, if there's multiple people that I'm interviewing with, I'll jot down their names so I can remember those, thank you notes later, which is a very important um, thing. Um, I even... Last time I interviewed for a position, I wrote smile on the bottom of it because I know that when I get so concentrated and so intense on something that, um, you know, I forget to do that. And that is part of nonverbal communication that really speaks, you know, a lot um, and just leaves an impression on the, uh, you know, employer um, that nothing you say can. And so I even like make myself little notes like that on it. But you just want to have your attention focused mostly out here, you know, with the people you're talking to, and then um, have some notes you can refer to periodically. Um, phone interviews are something that um, you may run into, and they can often be more difficult than an in-person interview because you are uh, not getting a sense for how you're being received, and often you're not hearing something on the other end of the line from the employer. You're not getting the nonverbals or kind of seeing from them when they have had their question answered. Um, so you tend to keep talking too. Um, and so that's something to be aware of in the phone interview. 
But the nice thing about the phone interview is you can have tons of notes. And I would highly encourage you to have notes, you know, all across your desk in those settings. Um, Skype and video interviews is another thing we're going to talk about um, and have you do for, for next time because those are becoming more and more common as well. Um, to save time and money of bringing somebody to a job site and interviewing them and you know getting the number of people down to a, a smaller number you know they want to talk to. Um, but anyway, five questions great candidates ask. Great candidates ask, what do you expect me to accomplish in the first 60 to 90 days? You know what they're expecting of you and if that's something you're comfortable with and think you can do. What are the common attributes of your top performers? What are the people like? Am I going to be happy in this environment? That's another way you can you know, kind of determine that. Uh, what are a few things that really drive results for the company? What are the priorities? Knowing what a company's priorities are is going to be a tremendous help to you in figuring out what things to work on and what things to spend your time on and what things to uh, not to spend so much time on. Because if you're spending time on the wrong things, um, you're not going to be as productive in your role. Uh, what do employees do in their spare time? Again, that's a good fit question. You know, do they like to go, you know, hiking? Do they all go to, you know, Nashville Predators games, you know, every month or, you know, what kind of thing like that? We enjoy hanging out with them. And then how do you plan to deal with, this is impressive, this question is to an employer, because it shows you've done your research. You've Googled their company, you've looked on the website, and you have gotten information about current trends and things going on in their industry. And you say, um, what are your plans for this? Um, it shows you really want to be there. And then, um, you know, finally, closing the sale, asking for the job, um, asking if there's anything that's keeping you from, you know, this, anything that you can clarify. Um, this hiring team that I was on, the, the manager used to, at the end of the day, sit down with the candidate and say, um, he's a very honest kind of a, kind of a guy. He said, here are some red flags that we uh, had or some concerns or additional questions that we have. Can you specify on this? You said this, talk more about that. You know, and so you may ask at the end of the interview, is there anything else I can clarify for you? Anything I can um, elaborate on or clear up or anything like that that would be possibly keeping me from getting this job? Sometimes people are just misunderstood and we interpreted things that they said in a way that they didn't intend you know, for it to be interpreted. So that might be a good idea too. Um, I'm gonna quickly go through things you wish you'd known before your job interview. Yeah. Um, I'm asking Yeah. Because I feel like oftentimes that's what I like struggle with. I don't want to be like so, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how do you ask for it respectfully? I, mm -hmm. I think you kind of do it, say, um, is there anything keeping me from, get, you know, yeah. being hired in this job? Is there anything further I can answer for you? And then you reiterate your interest and say, I would really like to um, work here and have the opportunity to be in this position after meeting with you, after he seeing the facilities, after hearing from, you know, and just reiterate your interest because employers are again asking themselves, does this person really want to be here? How interested are they? If we make a job offer to them, are they going to accept it or are they going to turn us down? And then we're going to have to go back to somebody that we already turned down or said, you know, said no to. Um, and so I really think asking for the job is about letting them know that yes, you're still very interested in this, if you are. You may go through the interview process and say, ah, oh, this place isn't for me. Um, then you can you know, ease off on that a little bit. But I think that's a way to do it um, without making it uncomfortable. Some people have a personality where they can ask for the job and do that, and you know, employer may laugh or whatever, but um, you know, they're serious um, about that. And so it just kind of is how it fits with your personality. Um, I had an interview and we did it with like me and another person together and they'd like ask mm -hmm. us questions on like they switch between us. How do you handle the situation? Mm -hmm. I'm not Somebody it was was it for the same job? Yeah, yeah, it was for the same I mean it was actually for like a program here on campus, but mm -hmm. it was like for the exact same job and they asked us very similar questions, but it was kinda like, Are you comparing us or 
Yeah. And only one person would be would be hired for it? I don't know. Or, okay. It was kind of like in the mm -hmm. process. Yeah, that's interesting. That kind of reminds me of a, of a presidential debate kind of uh, mm -hmm. scenario. Um, <coughs> I think you really answer the questions in the same way. Um, I, I'm not sure that there's a, too much of a difference in how you answer the questions because it's still about you. And so, like your experiences, and those are going to be different than the person um, next to you. I don't think, you know, obviously in a debate they get a little bit, you know, putting the other person down. You obviously don't do um, that, but but I think it's important to show how you interact with that person and how you're engaging with them when they're answering and paying attention to what they have, and if if there's something that they say that resonates with you, you say, as so-and-so said, I too, whatever. And that just shows you're engaged in the conversation, that you're listening to them, um, that you're comfortable in that scenario, um, you're confident in yourself. Uh, those are some of the main things that I think would be different in that setting. Um, I want to go through this real quick because we're just about out of um, time, but common nonverbal mistakes. Obviously, you all want to um, be dressed to impress. You want to go over the top and wearing, you know, wearing a, a tie for for guys, well pressed, you know, suit for um, for ladies, and have a firm handshake. You want to make good eye contact. You want to be engaged. Don't want to have your cell phone out or on even on vibrate or making any noise or anything like that or do anything that's going to be a distraction basically you don't want to be remembered as the green pants girl or the guy that you know just kept saying um or whatever like anything that is going to make you stand out other than what you're saying you want to try to avoid that goes with strong perfumes you don't want to have anything that um, is really going to um, stand out Couple things on here. Um, common nonverbal mistakes: playing with the hair, touching the face, having little knowledge of the company, failure to make eye contact, lack of smile, bad posture, crossing your arms over your chest, using too many hand gestures, a handshake that's weak, being fidgety. Um, bright colors are a turn off. They're not looking for somebody that's overly fashionable or trendy. They're looking for professional. Um, Statistics show when we need, meet new people, 7% is what we actually say, 38% is the quality of our grammar and our confidence and our voice, and then 55% is the way we dress, the way we act, the way we walk through the door. Um, and then the last thing, top common mistakes made at a, a job interview, over explaining why you lost your last job, Tell them what they need to know. Don't tell them much more you know, than that. You don't need to go into the nitty gritty details. Uh, conveying that you're not over your last job, uh, lacking humor, warmth, you want to show some of your personality, you want to show interest or enthusiasm in the job, you want to show that you've done your research um, about the employer. You shouldn't ask any questions that you can find online um, because that's your job beforehand. Um, trying to be all things to all people, trying to be you know, uh, master of all, jack of all trades, Winging the interview, not preparing. Um, number two, failing to set yourself apart from other candidates. Um, and then there's that, you know, failing to ask for the job, meaning expressing your interest in that. So um, we are out of time. Interview stream, log into that and conduct the interview online for next time. Um, if you have questions about how to do that, come see me. If there's other things you want to talk about specifically pertaining to interviews, um, you know, I'll stick around for a few minutes now or even several times to come in and talk about it uh, as well. And I will see you all um, <clears throat> thank you.